Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Let's Have a Pint. Today we have Pinner uh, Throwback IPA from Oscar Blues Brewing. Uh, it is a session IPA, 4.9% uh, alcohol, uh, 35 IBUs. Uh, I didn't realize this until I looked it up on Untapped. I've actually had this, and it was actually not too long ago. I just do not remember it. Um, but it was February 24th uh, of this year. Uh, the description for the beer reads, At 4.9% alcohol by volume and 35 IBUs, this drinkable IPA uses several varieties of hops to target the ever-evolving flavor with tropical fruits, citrus juices, pineapple, and spice berry up front in the aroma and flavor. The biscuit and toasted bread at the back balance out all the hops and make a great finish to go on to your next can of Pinner. It's the perfect beer for a little sip, sip, give. All right. I almost thought that wasn't on a coaster. Okay. So, Oscar Blues is one of my favorite breweries out of Colorado, and I got my IPA glass once again. See, we're almost there. So we got about two fingers worth of head. It's fairly lightly co uh, light in color, uh, shadowy through it. Uh, definitely get. Uh, tropical flavor out of it, uh, or out of the smell. I actually mostly get the pineapple. Little hint of the, uh, uh, spice berry, of the berry, anyway. Uh, but it's mostly citrus and, um, definitely the pineapple. Uh, I don't get nothing for the, like, biscuit and toasted bread that's supposed to be on the palate, but let's see. Light-bodied, carbonated. Definitely get that on the back of the palate, though. So right up front, I get the citrus juice, the burst of citrus juice and a little bit of pineapple and I think I'm getting uh, the spice berry in the middle followed by the uh, biscuit and toasted bread on the uh, end of the palate yeah berry is definitely in the middle And it, it's, that's very interesting and very good. I don't remember having liked it quite as much as I'm liking it now, and I had it on tap. I gave it a four. I think I'm going to give it higher than that. Because it's very much different, and I very much like it. It's, like I said, I love hot bombs. But I love IPAs that aren't bitter or, you know, overly what IPAs are supposed to be as well. Unfortunately, this one's not really coating the glass, though. And there's almost no bitterness to this. It almost drinks more like your typical pale, as far as bitterness goes. Which, again, I appreciate. That was a weird gust of wind to it. But it's almost too malty on the back end, the biscuit and toasted bread. It's almost too much for it being an IPA. And I don't feel like it goes with all the uh, fruits that are in the rest of the palate. I 
I mean, it's not like co completely contradictory. To an extent, it uh, meshes well. I mean, it definitely doesn't overpower or anything. Nothing's overpowering in the flavor. There's four or five things you can definitely pick out. Uh, but nothing is bigger than anything else. It's not like a hint of this and a ton of this. It's just flatline everything. But yeah, I do uh, really like Oscar Blues. Uh, they make one of my favorite uh, uh, bigger stouts. And of course, I really like Dale's Pale Ale. I'm going to guess that that's our youngest daughter. She loves to knock over trash cans. Uh, but 1050 is absolutely one of my favorite beers. And I don't think I, unfortunately, I don't think I did it on here, but they have a barrel-aged version out right now of 1050 that I did uh, have not too long ago. Uh, I've had their Imperial Porter, Deviant Dales. Uh, G Knight. Death by Coconut was so freaking good. But I love anything coconut as well. Uh, Mama's Little Yellow Pills. It's an incredible pills. 1050, like I said, I absolutely love that one. That is one of my favorite Imperial Stouts. Uh, Old Chub wasn't bad, but Scotch Ales aren't one of my digs, so... And then I, this is second to Pinner, I guess. Does that go by most ratings? Yeah, it does. No, it doesn't. I wonder how they... Uh, why they put these in the order they do, because if it's by rating, little yellow pill should be above 1050. But... Uh, it's a pretty good session IPA. I enjoy it a lot. It's just that the uh, uh, malt on the back end is so uncommon that it almost detracts from the beer. I appreciate it, but it's just not something you get a whole lot. So it kind of detracts a little bit. But anyways, what I wanted to talk about in the last episode that we're actually going to talk about in this episode, uh, Fallen Kingdom. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Uh, oh, I have seen another movie that's out in theaters. Incredibles 2. That was pretty good. Uh, what the hell was the last thing I even saw in theaters? Probably before I saw Fallen Kingdom, it was probably like four months before that, the last time I'd seen anything in theaters. Uh, sorry, hair on the camera. No doubt one of my children. Uh, but yeah, I would honestly rate uh, the Lost World Jurassic Park <laughs> and Jurassic Park both 10 out of 10 there pretty much perfect films. Uh, Jurassic Park 3, I would say about a 7 out of 10. Uh, Jurassic World, 8.5 or 9 out of 10. Uh, after the first time I saw Fallen Kingdom, I was saying 6 out of 10. Uh, second time I saw it, I was a little more into it. Uh, I would say... I'd probably rate it 7.5 or 8 out of 10. With the potential of being a 10 out of 10 film. Uh, 
my biggest gripe with the film, and I hear there's going to be a director's cut. That director's cut needs to be at least an hour longer. Uh, preferably two hours longer. Because I think that's what's missing the most. We don't get nearly enough time with the island before it goes up in smoke. Literally. Uh, we get like 45 minutes to an hour with the island. And I felt like it needed so much more time. Uh, I mean, it's the end of an island we've known since 93. Technically 89 uh, with the books. Uh, but it's, you know, it's... It's something I grew up with. And, I mean, I, I didn't mind the send-off. We just needed more time developing that send-off. Uh, some people are saying they didn't like the Brachiosaurus scene at the end of the island. Uh, some people that are, were just so shook up by I, I don't cry for movies. And both times I saw Fallen Kingdom, that scene made me cry. Uh, I thought it was a very, very good send-off for the island and for the Brachiosaur. Uh, I love the other Brachiosaur scene. I, I love most of what was on the island. I liked all the variety. But if, you know, if we could have gotten at least another half hour with the island, I'd have been okay with, more okay with the variety of dinosaurs. Um, no one stuck out on the island. Like, you know, all of a sudden there's new carnivore, you know, whatever. Uh, you know, the baryonyx was nice to see. It got the most screen time of any carnivore on the island. But we had that young allosaur that... It got, how the hell long did it get? It got like 30 seconds of screen time and then bam, dead. Uh, the Carnotaurus got a couple of minutes. That scene needed to be longer and set up a little bit more before Rexy came in, basically. Uh... Rexy doesn't need time at this point. We know Rexy. We know, you know, we've learned the dinosaur. I don't mind them bringing all these other dinosaurs in, but we need to learn them. Uh, in the second half of the film, I like the in Indoraptor. Are you needing me? Uh, I liked the Indoraptor. But again, I think we needed at least 30 more minutes with the... Jesus Christ, you hurt. You are a hurty little boy. But uh, I think we needed at least 30 more minutes with the Indoraptor. If it could have been a four-hour film, I think that would have been perfect. You're going to do it again, aren't you? Okay, good. I think that would have been perfect for the film. Uh, two hours on the island, two hours at the mansion. It would have felt like a vastly better film. I mean, basically it was two films in one. You know? Because uh, you have two vastly different settings in the same film. Uh... And at the mansion, you know, like, I've heard other people talk about the movie, and the whole thing with uh, who Masi was a clone of, who her mother was, it literally didn't change anything in the story of this uh, film. It didn't add anything, it didn't detract anything, it wouldn't detract if it wasn't there. Now maybe it'll be a bigger thing in the next film. Uh, and I have a feeling it's going to turn out that her mother was a nobody to the series. Uh, the only person I feel makes sense, uh, 
and would make me okay with why it's even mentioned uh, would be Sarah Harding. But at the same time, we haven't learned of a death for her. We never learned that she died. Not that they can't, you know, bring that up in the next film. But I feel like it has to be somebody we know from the franchise. Uh, Ellie wouldn't make sense, in my opinion. Now, granted, nobody really makes sense. But the other one I'd be okay with is Sarah Harding. You know, it couldn't be anybody from the third movie. Uh, because none of them were in that, in that, you know, they were just a family that were trying to find their kid basically uh there was no nothing really that was in the first Jurassic World that could be a possibility you know Ellie was the only one from the first film or the little girl but I don't know the only one that the only way they could make that an okay storyline to me is Sarah Harding and I would like I would enjoy that because Sarah Harding was one of my favorite characters throughout the franchise and she was only in one film. Uh, I don't necessarily like the idea of the dinosaurs being out because, and you know, saying that it's a Jurassic world, they're going to die off. You know, the only ones that really have a vague chance that, of what you see on the screen, there was three or four Gallimimus. Well, that's hardly a population, and I don't know if that's a sustainable population. That's very, that's incredibly difficult to sustain. Uh, looking at it scientifically, you might as well say they're extinct. Because a population of four is more than likely a death sentence. Even a population of a hundred, it's very difficult to get a sustainable population out of that. Uh... That, and that's my gripe there. Uh, I'll, we'll have to see where they go with it, but there's just not enough individuals in each species for them to survive, so I don't know what they're going to go on with. And I don't like the last scene with Blue. I don't. I don't like that one. I also don't like that Blue is the only Velociraptor. You know... It's it's an that's an extinct species, Tyrannosaur, extinct species. Uh, anything else you see in the uh, in the carnivore family that escaped is an extinct species. Uh, we might have had the a young Allosaur later, but I swear the young Allosaur died in the stampede. But I could be wrong. But it looked like actually that. There was a young Allosaur in that escape scene. Don't you start doing it again. But, uh, I don't know. I liked it, but... I'm worried, as well. Uh... I mean, I've had other gripes with the fail or with this film series, you know, like... The first one had a lot of issues. Uh... Dilophosaur was very small. Uh, Velociraptor was very large. Velociraptor was Deinonychus sized. Uh, whereas Velociraptor would easily fit on this table. You know, Velociraptor was something like this long. You can't see that really, but. They they got up to about six feet in length, three feet tall. It was you know, and the ones in the movies six feet tall, and twelve feet long. That's Deinonychus, and they lo resembled exactly like like Deinonychus. But I don't know. I did enjoy it, but knowing so much about animals and dinosaurs specifically. Uh, the number one thing that I think is going to kill off pretty much everything, single one of them, is disease. There's diseases 
that they weren't exposed to in their, uh, you know, on their island, that they're all of a sudden going to be exposed to and not have any antibodies built up to, and it's going to kill them. You know, there's diseases out there today that were never, you know, I, I don't know if there was any diseases that are around today that are, that were around back then, a hundred, uh, whatever, 65 million years ago, 120 million years ago, 180 million years ago, any, any of the eras of the dinosaur, but... You know, don't remember, I like Malcolm's part. Uh, and what he said was so good. It, it sounded better in the trailer, though, to be honest. But I'd love to see uh, Grant back in the next film. Uh, I don't know. I. There's, there's so many dinosaurs, though, that have been in pretty much every one of the games that have never been in the uh, movies and I, that I'd love to see. Uh, Troudon's got to be my top one. Um, Troudon was the only dinosaur that we believe was smarter than the Velociraptor. Uh, I'd love to see not the movie monster Spinosaur, but... A real uh, what Spinosaurus really looked like and I'd love to actually see a fight between a Giganotosaurus or Giganotosaurus however you want to pronounce it and a Tyrannosaur although with that said Giganotosaurus or Giganotosaurus was uh, um, a little bit bigger and vastly more powerful more powerfully built. Uh, what they and they were actually pack hunters, and the reason why they were pack hunters is because their main food source was a fairly large sauropod. I think it was uh, Supersaurus or something. I'm not sure exactly which one it was, but they were fairly large. They were like eighty feet in in length and such. But they were in, like, packs of three. Which would be something cool to see, but I don't think anything like that would make sense in a film. Maybe if we had another TV show like Terra Nova, which I have the first season, the only season, uh, over there. That was a fantastic show. I'd love to see the Spinosaur. But again, when did that come out? Because that, I might be okay with their Spinosaur depending on when that show started, because 2013 we uncovered another uh, skeleton, you know, the other one was uh, destroyed in World War II. You know, Germany had it, and it was destroyed in World War II. So, uh, we never... It was 2011, so I can forgive them for their look on the Spinosaurus. But, uh, we uncovered another uh, complete skeleton, which is the first one we had uncovered, uh, since the one in 1923 that ended up getting destroyed in World War II. Uh, we found out, you know, and we weren't that sophisticated about it then, we thought they were all monstrous beasts. Uh, the first King Kong movie had brachiosaurs eating people. But, uh, and that was a few years after 1923, but uh, now I'm lost what I was going to say. But we've found out so much in the two years preceding uh, uncovering that skeleton about Spinosaurus, and it's actually, I liked it before, it's actually become one of my favorites, along with Therizinosaurus. Uh, which was actually the original inspiration for the Indominus Rex was Therizinosaurus. Uh, but we found out uh, Spinosaurus was... Well, originally we thought Spinosaurus was 80-85% aquatic. Then, you know, as time progressed, we were thinking more 95 and then it got pushed even further to about 98% aquatic. It rarely came on land, um, is where we're at, where we've been at for about three, four years now. 
with Spinosaurus. Uh, the shape was different for it. It was more elongated, not high. Uh, and there's estimates of them getting up to 60 feet in length, which it would still pale in comparison to a 40 foot tyrannosaur on land. Now, if it's in water and it grabs a tyrannosaur, you know, tyrannosaur's not gonna survive that, but a, a straight up fight on land, it, the tyrannosaur's gonna destroy it all day long. But, uh, it is vastly different than what we thought. We knew it uh, by the shape of its jaw that it would have liked fish. But now we're, you know, now we're at a point where we're pretty sure that was its main food source, where that was 90 plus percent of its diet was fish. And I kind of like that for the arc version, but it's still a little weird in arc survival evolved. I don't remember exactly if there's looked like the Jurassic Park one or if it looked like Spinosaurus actually looked. And I think it did look like Spinosaurus was actually supposed to look. Again, for what we think now, it could change. But, uh, I'd love to see that in the series, too. But, yeah, I liked Fallen Kingdom. Uh, depending on what they do with the third film will solidify what exactly what I think of the film, but, but until we get that film, I'm saying like a seven and a half, uh, it was a little disappointing to me. What I'm hoping for is more proper dinosaur films to come up, because this is a big blockbuster franchise of dinosaurs, so I'm hoping that, and not like B-movie, uh, B-movie monster dinosaurs, like proper dinosaurs, like you get, like we got in Jurassic Park, uh, like we got in The Lost World. It would never be a summer blockbuster, but... Anyways, I just wanted to talk about Fallen Kingdom this episode. I'd like to know what everybody else thought. I'm guessing pretty much everybody who watches has seen it, because so many people have seen it. But another thing I want to say is the second part of the film could have been so much better longer for the fact that you know we're trying to set up something completely foreign to the Jurassic Park experience the closest was Lost World it had a few uh, scenes vaguely tense like what that was supposed to be vaguely horror-ish uh But we needed more time to build that tension. You know, a lot of your, like, drama horrors, which are the best horror films to me, they spend pretty much the whole movie building up the tension and getting you on your the edge of your seat. This is just like, here's the Indominus, we'll have, or the, Indom the Indoraptor, and we'll have you on the edge of your seat for, like, 15, 20 minutes, and then here's the death of it. Or I shouldn't say the death. Here's the final scene of it, and you know this is going to be the end for it. But I'm hope I, I seriously, preferably, uh, I would like to see two hours of extra <laughs> footage on the director's cut. But by what I'm hearing, it's going to be about 45 minutes. Which is enough to make it a better film. To where I can, you know, could say, okay, well, I'm going to say this film is an eight, eight and a half. You know. But I feel like you give it that proper time and, you know, add two hours to the film. It's going to be a very solid film. Where it could hit that 10 out of 10 to me. But anyways, 
what did I rate this last time I had it? Rated it, oh yeah, I rated it four stars. I said that 30 minutes ago. I'm not really going to go up from there, actually. I'm going to stick with that other four star uh, on this beer. So, I'm happy I got that out about Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom. Um, right now, I'm kind of going back through Grand Theft Auto V. Um, I've played it twice before on the PS3 when, I, when it came out. Uh, but I just don't have a lot of time anymore. So I don't know how quickly that's going to happen. I'm watching my girlfriend play it, too. She's going through it. She's much further than I am. Uh, I kind of want to do an episode where I talk about that game and how excited I am for uh, 6, which they possibly uh, accidentally leaked, are knowing Rockstar. It could very easily be a troll where they could, you know, up to the date that was specified, they could troll us completely up until then and, you know, and then no game. I would not be surprised about that through Rockstar. Uh, but anyways, that's it for this episode. I'm out of beer. Alright, so Prost.